On the left hand side is Firestorm with our 3D piano kit. So basically it's a little over two octaves. And on the right hand side is Muse Score. And we're going to click here and then go left with the left arrow key. Like that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for the New Era, Part 6, Double Cycles. In today's episode, we were entered by reflecting that we are continuing to integrate our music and work. We do a lot of work in 3D environments, and you just saw a comparison of that. We're also continuing our new learning process. Uh, in particular, we showed off we had this new MIDI keyboard in our last episode, and we have set it up in a separate music workstation with our other little computers so that we can spend time with the manual and learn how it works. Uh, there's a heavy learning curve there. Um, so far we've made custom scales using MuseScore and Firestorm, which you just saw us do. And we think that eventually we'll be able to program that same scale into here. Um, we also talked today about methodic innovation. And um, and we say ran being random is one of our methods, to be quite honest. Um, what else? So what we did is we started working with this custom scale, which we've looked at many, many times. These are the chords in canonical order. This is the scale. And then we said we're going to combine our methods. One of our methods for um, composing is to put this to play the chords as they are canonically and then pick out a backbone. We did that with this scale. Another method is to go here and pick out intervals by eye that sound good. And we did that. And so today we tried to do, we did, we did both. Today we made a point of taking everything that was on the left hand side in the canonical scale and then on the right hand side, right hand side, uh, we, we changed the order of the chords. We're, they're what we call spelling order. Then we change the voicing of the chord. So these are spelling and rising. What's the difference? Well, here, this goes like this. But if you do it rising, it goes like this. And one thing we notice is that every once in a while, it feels like the chord uh, lowered itself, but it didn't really, because see what we really mean by, what we really mean by rising order is when we start here, the root is C. Then, then we started up to an E flat, and we're still on the E flat. Now we went up to the G flat, then we are still on the G flat, and now we're still on the G flat. Now it sounds like it went down, but it didn't. It's still on a G flat. But that's because the top chord, the top note, the C, fell to a B. Anyway, we call that a perceived fall. So that gave us a whole new perspective on working with the cadences. So then we cherry picked some of them based on what we liked out of that. Da, 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 da. And then this one had a jazzy feel like that. And so that's how we generated cadences. And then as we said before, we went and using our Firestorm 3D uh, over here, we again, like how we have done before, we picked out um, da, 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 da. And that's a completely different way to pick out things, looking at colors and spaces. We also reflected how deceptive it is that, um, you know, we thought we thought this was a three. 
We thought that was a 2-1, but it's actually a 3-1. reasons and what's happening is that when you zoom in on it in three dimensions it only becomes clearer that that there's extra space da, one two three one three da, 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 da. anyway we had fun doing all that then finally we had a concept picture that we wanted to do of gain in awareness. We wanted to make rotating sticks with a static hub and then we wanted the sticks to move around but we needed some music and that's why we spent a lot of time composing gain in awareness one which you've just heard selected parts from and then we made this animation so how does that go? Let's see let's put this over here let's turn off the keyboard so, for example, if we just play this from the top, our first goal was to make a rotating stick, which is this one. But if you look at our reference image, we wanted kind of uh, paired sticks like that. So now we had to take it and make one that went to the right. like that. Then we had to have what we called a hub. We wanted the hub that was moving blah, 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 like that. So here's our hub. Then we put them together and we got something that looks like a TV antenna. So we like that quite a bit. Now that that solved, that got a, that, that concept picture got completed but then we had this other composite picture that we don't have digitally to show you but it's kind of like four of those uh, four of those angled sticks so we got this far we made a rotated composite like this but we really kind of want it to look like a kite and we're working on that And that's kind of where we halted because, you know, a kite, the side angles should be wider and, and the top and bottom angles are sharper. You know, it's a kite shape. It's, you know, whatever. Kind of a squat, a squat on top and a sharp on the bottom. But we got that far. So we were quite productive today, we feel. So what we're going to do to bring us home for now is play... Uh, the parts that we picked out as as good material for a composition which are going to be the cherry-picked cadences and by cherry-picked we mean methodically uh, they were pretty more methodical and then the randomly picked motifs from the firestorm so here we go So that concludes today's episode. What we really like about today is how we we kind of took our theme of double cycles and we had the concept sketch, which was, um, what was it, this one? Yeah, that one. And we uh, have a second music workstation, which you're seeing on the right. Uh, but then we also were reflecting on where the idea of methodic innovation came from. What is random? Random comes from the root word to run or flow. 
sequence comes from follow, which is pretty obvious, and arpeggio comes from harp. And sequencer arpeggiator is what this workstation does for us. So our ideas for next time are to uh, try programming the motifs in the key step MIDI controller and record them back somehow into either Reaper or MuseScore for us to add to the material that we've been generating manually today. Also, we discuss making the kite sticks with a wider range and keep composing that, that song. Uh, we also have a uh, field trip tonight. We found one of our older compositions that we think is going to be a great fit for a visual slideshow. Okay, we already said that one. Shout outs to Steady Worker and to Silent Lurker. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.